I still can't believe you lied to me. I didn't. Dad, you withheld information. Vance just read me the riot act, Jessica, so drop it. I'm not talking about the job. I'm talking about us, the family. You scared Robin and I half to death. I did what I thought was best. For who? So this episode, we get to meet my father, who is considered the Gibbs of the Far East. He is um, special agent in charge. Um, uh, well, we say Zhao Fang, and uh, he is a larger than life figure. He has been a hero in Night's Eye since she was a child. She looks up to him. She wanted to be him. She got into NCIS to follow in her father's footsteps. He, his instincts are on point. He take risk, but is never considered stupid. He's he's just an amazing man and extremely great at his job and really well received and respected within the NCIS world. So. Director Vanson, I'm pretty sure Gibbs would have actually known about my father. Uh, so his personality, it can be overwhelming. It's, uh, you definitely have to have a, a strong personality of your own to stand up to him or to at least be able to step out of his shadow. And I think the great thing that you see in this episode is that Knight really comes into her own when it comes to her father. <laughs> The plan, which also is the name of the episode, is a career trajectory that father and daughter had worked out together about what Knight would do with her career. And it was agreed upon. And as far as we know, Knight has been actively taking the steps forward. And the first time that she actually veered off of the plan was when she lost her React team and ended up stick, uh, becoming part of the NCIS team here in DC. So when her father sees her, he basically says, all right, what's going on with the plan? What are you doing? Have you stagnated? Are you not going forward with it? I think you can do more than what you're actively doing right now. And by the way, who is this guy? Because Knight may or may not have forgotten to tell her father about Jimmy Palmer. Well, shooting the scene was a lot of fun because uh, Russell Wong, who plays my father, is actually an amazing athlete. He's been a dancer, a ballet dancer his entire life. So he's a legitimate baller, not ballerina, but ballet dancer. And so he's very athletic, but not only that, he's also a really good runner. So when they had his double running for him, Russell basically kept saying, can I just run by myself? Because of I'm kind of good at it and I like being able to do my own stunts if I can. So running him running through the woods, a lot of that what you see is actually Russell Wong doing his own choreography. That day, uh, that entire episode, actually, I had the flu, <laughs> which is a lot of fun when you have a really heavy episode and and uh, you have to do all of your own stunts. So I, I tried to not do my stunts as much as possible but again when that athletic part of you and that competitive side comes out and you go but i want to run and you know I, I feel like i have good form and i want to run too and then of course my father's running so now i gotta run so yeah it was a lot of running <laughs> I am pretty sure that Knight and her father uh, spent a lot of time watching every action blockbuster movie, uh, indie fight uh, movie that came out together. And that's kind of one of their bonding moments. So even though they've been separated with the, the job, I think both of them saying, of course I saw the John Wick movie, we love those. Yeah, and I know exactly what you're talking about, just kind of shows the intense bond that they have. And um, again, Russell was just on fire that day. He also happens to train in martial arts to go along with all of his track and field and ballet dancing. So the majority of that you fight, that, that fight that you see with Russell is actually him doing it. He was so great. Um, and then uh, again, I I kind of did half of my fight because I was sick, but the one part that I did do was running up the wall and that was a lot of fun. That scene where Jimmy comes in with coffee and meets my dad for the first time, 
might be my favorite scene of the season. It was so beautifully awkward and everybody just knocked it out of the park. And, you know, Jimmy, who's played by Brian Deetson, as everybody knows, just has this like wide eyed gaze, this puppy dog kind of, I'm emotionally available and here for everybody, walks in with these two cups of coffee. She's just so hopeful to make a great impression with her father. And of course her father's like, it's okay, Proby, you won't be getting coffees for long. And just the ego bubble burst on Jimmy's face is just amazing. And the fact that my father's looking at him with zero recognition. And of course, I'm looking at the sky, the floor, anywhere, trying to crawl out of the situation. And then with the team witnessing, just made it worse for everybody. So yeah, it was, that scene was fantastic. The elevator scene forces her again to have a moment of, in, in layman terms, to man up and just be like, you know what, I, I didn't tell my dad about you and it was easier to avoid the subject than have to confront my father about me potentially wanting to start a life with you and staying in DC and not going forward with the plan as we planned and that maybe I have my own plan at the moment and all of that was just easier to avoid than to confront her father about um and at the same time no matter how noble Knight tries to make that sound in her own head the damage has already been done. Jimmy's feelings have already been hurt and he knows how close she is with her father. So the fact that essentially years, a year or so has gone on now and she still hasn't mentioned, that's a that's a pretty big slap in the face to have to take on. And she knows it and she's, she's emotionally aware um, that she is a big jerk in this situation and there's no getting out of that. <laughs> and she has a lot of apolo apologizing to do to several people and also because you know her father same thing even though she didn't tell him it's still technically a lie because out of out of a mission um i'm speaking mandarin in the interrogation room um russell Wong, we're all speaking mandarin i i personally uh am fluent in mandarin in my real life because my mom is from taiwan and uh yeah we did have a we did have a dialect coach there just in case, you know, some of these words you don't necessarily say in everyday conversation and just making sure that our pronunciation is is correct and everybody's on the same page um, is very helpful. But it's it's great to be able to bring that aspect to NCIS. And I love the fact that the writers embraced my real life heritage and said, you speak Mandarin, let's use it, let's, let's bring it on. And I feel like because of that, we now have this amazing storyline with my father being head of the Far East office and then having a whole nother portion of the world that we can bring into this into the NCIS fold that just makes it that much richer and um, brings a lot of depth. So I, I think when Knight is offered the job of um, uh, basically uh, SAC in the Far East, before Jimmy, before the NCIS team, before she lost a React team, if she'd been offered that job, she would have taken it in a heartbeat because it was a part of the plan. And I think since since React, she's had a lot of moments of self-reflection and just um, a lot of thought about what it is she wants to do, where she's at. And I do think that she's probably had a couple of thoughts of maybe I am settling, maybe I'm running a little scared. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm taking the easy way out. But I think she's also truly happy being with the NCIS team. And I think she's very happy in her relationship with Jimmy. And even though she didn't like children, she loves Victoria. So everything's just kind of falling into place in a way that's very unexpected for her. So when she's offered this job now, it just completely um, butts up against the reality that she's living in the moment. And it's not something that she necessarily wants right now. Um, so when she's talking to Jimmy about the job and the job offer, he of course is coming from a place of insecurity because of what he just experienced with her and her father and her not having open communication. And I think that's a very valid emotion from his, from him. And, um, she's not necessarily appreciating his vulnerability at the moment because in her head she's going but no, no no i already gave up the plan i gave up the plan for this team i gave up the plan for you i turned down this job 
because I'm happy and you are part of my happiness. But of course, Jimmy's going, is that long-term happiness or is that short-term happiness? And I think Knight's not necessarily in a position right now where she can say if it's long-term or short-term, she's just living in the moment because that's all she has right now. And um, I think he, because of uh, Jimmy's experiences with losing Gibbs and then losing his wife and then Bishop leaving and then Ducky having passed away, I think he's starting to get into a very defensive position about people leaving him without him having a say or even knowledge that it's about to happen. And I think his defenses are getting riled up in ways that are not something that Knight has necessarily noticed yet. So um, I do think it leaves them in an interesting spot of how do they move forward with this because it is a betrayal on Knight's part and it is hitting against Jimmy's personal insecurities that Knight has nothing to do with. So it, it's a precarious position for the two of them. I think for um, Jimmy, I think He's never quite the same after this episode when it comes to Knight. I think his trust level for her has gone down a little bit. I think his, ins I think she has hit upon um, a, a nerve of his that has just now started getting really irritated. So um, in that aspect, I don't, it's gonna be bumpy. It's gonna be a bumpy little road for them. Um, and then later, uh, you're gonna, some stuff goes down in the season finale, which it's gonna be a great episode. I'm very excited for people to see that. But a lot of stuff happens in the, in the season finale that tests all of our characters and puts everybody in a life or death situation. And um, it'll be interesting to see people's men mental, uh, their mentality when they come out and how they've changed, how that one experience has changed them.